when we're talking about control systems, there is a particular set of general equations that is often used, uh, linear control, linear time invariant control systems that are, that are called the state space representation. And this is a classical representation of equations that define the behavior of a control system. There are two equations in the classic description. The first one is x dot of t is equal to, so this is the derivative of x of t. x of t is the state vector. We'll talk about what that is in a moment, but it's a multi-dimensional signal that we're going to make up of a uh, times x of t. And if you recall from a dynamical system that the definition of a dynamical system is where you have some variable, right, some multidimensional state, the derivative of which is equal to a times the state itself. So, so far, this is just the dynamical system. It's a little more interesting because we're talking about an, a, a, a system as opposed to just a dynamical system, right? an input-output system. So let's define the input components as well. So plus another matrix B times U of T. And this U of T is the input signal, multidimensional input signal to the control system. So B is our input matrix. A is our state matrix. X is our state, the internal state of the of the control system and this is our general equation for updating the state then there's a set of equations that describe the output itself and note that this is y of t the output of the state there's no dot here it's just y and this is going to be equal to c times x of t plus dt D, sorry, matrix D times U of T. And so what you're seeing here is that the output is, the output Y of T is, rep, is a linear transformation, right? C is a matrix of the state of the system plus some linear transformation of the input signal itself. Now, each of these terms has a definition and an explanation. Let's go through them step by step. X of t is the state itself. Right? This is the state vector. This is whatever internal state of the system is being tracked. Y of t is the output state or the output vector. And this is whatever it is we, that the system is outputting, right? The, the signal potentially being controlled. Uh, U of T is the input vector. And remember, these can be multidimensional um, signal. So it's not just one signal that we're looking at over time. It could be multiple signals that are being passed in to the control system. So this is the signal that controls the rest of the system, right? U of T and Y of T, just as we saw in previous LTI systems. Then we have the matrices A, B, C, and D. And each one represents something. A is our state matrix. This is what updates x of t and provides us with our first guess, right, of the derivative of x of t. B is our input matrix. And this defines how the input vector contributes to the change in x of t. Then we have C which is called the output matrix. And that you can imagine, you can see that here, right? C times X of T, the state of in the internal state of the system that we're tracking, provides us with, you know, a contribution to the output. 
And finally, we have the last matrix D. And D is the feed through, feed forward. We'll call it the feed forward matrix. Feed forward matrix. And the reason it's called feed forward is because this takes the input, the control, the input vector itself and directly contributes to Y of T, bypassing any state functions at all. In general, we tend not to use this. Mostly because this is not something that is often modeled. So most of the time we will ignore the feed forward matrix. And the reason I wrote this all on the side here is because there is a diagram that will summarize these four equations. And so let's walk through that in a moment here. Let's say that we're dealing with some input because they are going to put inputs over here and outputs over here and everything is going to fall in between. So let's say we have some input. Oh, let's make that straight. And the input is right, our input vector u of t. And what is going to happen to u of t? Well, it's going to get multiplied by the matrix B. So we'll put B as the matrix here. And to that, we are going to add something, right? So this is going to get added, put a plus here and a plus here. The sum of B of U of T plus A of X of T. So this is going to have to somehow, which we haven't figured out yet, but we'll get there, right? This part has to be A of T. So keep that in mind. The output of these two, the, the sum of those two is going to be X dot of T. That's what this is telling us. You know what I want to do? I want to put these in a different color. Delete this, delete this. And I want to put these in green. I want to put these guys in yellow. The matrices in yellow, the signals in green. And so B times U of T is going to equal plus A of X of T is going to equal X dot. So this is going to be X dot of T. Okay. I should probably do this in blue because otherwise the green and the yellow are too close to each other to see. And just for completeness sake, let's go ahead and make these the same color so we can see everything pretty cleanly. This is going to be A, this is going to be B, this is going to be C, oh, I forgot to erase D. And this is going to be D. Okay, so we've got B times u of t plus ax of t, which we're going to figure out how to get there here. And then we get us to x dot of t. Well, the next step is to take x dot and integrate it. Because if we integrate x dot, what do we get? We get x of t. And we need x of t to create the output, because that's what's going on with y of t. So we're going to draw another box here. And we're going to put in an operation. We're going to call this the integral. Um, it can also be represented in the Laplace domain as, right, this is integral dt. Um, it can also be represented in the Laplace domain as 1 over s. That's the same thing. Remember, integration in the time domain is equal to multiplying by 1 over s in the Laplace domain. The reason I'm putting this up is because we can do all of these control systems in the Laplace domain as well, but that's, that's the next video. And after we integrate x dot of t, what do we get? Well, we get, as you would expect, x of t, because that's what happens when you integrate a signal, right? If you integrate x, you get x. If you integrate x dot, you get x of t. And now that we have x of t, 
what can we do? Well, according to create, we have the goal is to create y of t here. And to create y of t, we have to multiply by c. All right, we can do that. Now, before we do that, notice that we have x of t now. And x of t is needed here to come up with this end of x dot of t. And so we're going to tap x of t. We're going to feed it backwards. And what are we going to multiply it by? We're going to multiply it by another matrix. And that matrix is A. And so A, A matrix goes here because A times x of t right here is going to be fed in and added to B times U of T here to give us X of T. Now this little loop is complete because now X dot of T, right, is the sum of B U of T here plus A X of T, A X of T. It's very nice. So we've now completed the equation and the loop that describes X dot of T. Our final step then is to wrap up the rest of Y of T and make it happen. And so X of T, here needs to be multiplied by C. And let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add another box, another matrix multiply. We're going to put in the C matrix. We are going to add that if we were doing feed. Let's just model it because why not? It's not that hard. We're going to take C of T, C of X. We're going to put a plus sign here. We're going to put a plus sign there. And the output of this plus is going to be, right, some C of, T, C of X plus D of U is equal to Y of T. So whatever the output of this plus is, we get Y, oops, wrong colors. We get Y of T. Excellent. And now all we have to do is fill in this D U of T. And that's also easy to do because it's right up here. And so if we tap this signal before we get multiplied by B, which is U, put it in a box, and of course we're gonna put D in here. Then we can take that and feed it in here, and thus we've completed our feed forward matrix as well, even though we don't typically use it, and we're all done. This state diagram here is this exact set of equations. You can see how the signals flow through all of this and the U of T and the Y of T and the X of T are all related based on the matrices here. This is the basis for the state space control, represent, control system representation. And understanding how the A, B, and A, B, C, and D matrices, if there is a D, interact is a fundamental concept behind control systems modeling. Even more importantly, you will, you will learn that the A matrix controls a lot of this behavior and is fundamentally crucial to how the system operates. We'll cover that in the next lecture, in the next video.